Hello, and welcome to It's Gonna Be May All the Day Long Artist Interview Series. For episode four, we have Scott Lawrence. Born and raised in Madrid, Spain, Scott Lawrence grew up in a family of missionaries, artists, and musicians. This passion for the arts led Scott to obtaining his bachelor's and master's of music in vocal performance. His training and experience spans multiple styles, from opera, crossover, pop, and even competing internationally in barbershop. However, his classical foundation always reestablishes itself as his first musical love. Scott sings bass with the classical crossover group Veritas. When he isn't singing with them, he likes to work on the visual arts, drink coffee, and read. Without further ado, here's the interview with Scott Lawrence. Quite a bit has changed, really. Um, we, you know, my, what I do as my full-time job is I, I travel with Veritas. It's a five-guy singing group. Um, we spend about 200 days a year on the road. And um, obviously, right now, no one's on the road. No one's and on so the road. that was a very big change of pace for us. Um, the upside of it is I've now been home longer um than i've been in over eight years <laughs> wow. um so so this is the first time that i mean my daughter doesn't know me to be home on the weekends because ever since she was born i mean i've maybe five weekends out of the year i'll be home um so this is a very very new thing um so that's been that's been the definitely the upside has been a lot more time with my family um but life has definitely changed not to, not touring um, we were working on an album and we're still doing what we can from home, but obviously there's only so much you can do. A lot of it has been more, uh, just planning and prep work and all that stuff than actual recording. <clears throat> and so a lot of things are kind of on pause. And so we've had to just rethink what we're doing and figure out how do we make it work in this current time. So you, you guys cannot currently go to recording studio right now? Technically we could. Um, the It's finding a studio that will allow you to, finding an engineer that's willing to be there, find, you know, and we all live in three different states. Uh, we're, we're divided between Texas, Alabama, and Tennessee. And so for us to all coordinate being in the same place and then it's just a lot of those kind of things that are, you know, <laughs> a lot to figure out at this time. And so we're kind of just putting the actual recording on pause for at least another few weeks until we know a little more about what things are going to look like. One of the very first weeks that we were home, we were like, we still need to do something. We got to got to stay creative. And so we made one and it actually did really well. Our, 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 fans like really responded well so we've been putting at least one a week out since then I think we've done seven of them now okay. um and so yeah so we've got that on our Facebook page and on our YouTube page and we do some of them are acapella some of them have a track how is your family doing it has anyone been have you or anyone that's close to you been impacted by COVID-19? As far as the actual sickness, no. Um, not uh, not my immediate family. I do have some friends that have been impacted by it. I have several friends that have actually uh, been sick with COVID-19. Um, thankfully, all of them have recovered or are recovering right now. Uh, but none of my immediate family has been impacted. My Myself, my wife, my daughter, we've all been healthy. Um, so we're just going crazy trying to figure out what to do with a two-year-old to get her energy out. <laughs> to change one thing about how you started 2020 knowing that we would all be home what would you change i'm sure there's something that i would want to change but my initial reaction is that i wouldn't change anything um because i find when you're faced with a crisis or a sudden change in pace um things that are beyond your control it almost forces you to think even more creatively um, rather than if you spend three months planning for something. Sometimes there's that immediacy that requires action 
I tend to be somebody who, who lives in my brain a lot mm -hmm. and I can stay there for a long time with ever, without ever actually uh, getting to work on something. And so when things changed quickly, it was, it was a matter of, okay, I've got to make some decisions now. I don't have time to explore every possible options. I just have to start doing something. I have to start creating something. I have to uh, make, make things work. And so there's something about that immediacy that I actually really respect and appreciate. So I don't know that I would change anything because it might take that away from me. Okay. So playing off of you saying that you needed to be creative right away, what are a few things that you did to keep your creativity flowing? Sure. Well, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the social distancing series that we did with Veritas, that was, that's been one of the big things that we've been focusing on, which has been a lot of fun, but also it's taken a lot of time to put that together. And it's kind of helped us just keep content in front of our followers. Um, and so it's been good for them, but it's been good for us just to keep creating. Uh, we also started a YouTube series. Uh, we call it Veritox. And okay. it's just some interviews and kind of podcast style, but via, via video, not, not much different than this even. And that's interviewing a bunch of friends and uh, people that we admire and uh, just to keep creative conversations going and people that encourage, inspire us, and hopefully will encourage, inspire other people. So things like that. And like I said, we're still working on an album. And so we, we have weekly meetings that we're still discussing, discussing arrangements and discussing ideas and uh, ideas for the show that's going to come out of this album and things like that. And so, so all of that. Guys, do you guys arrange all of your music or do you hire someone to arrange the music for you? We hire people that we work with. Um, we, we try to remain involved in the process, um, but we, we try to hire people that are a lot better at it than we are and surround ourselves with those people that can really elevate what we're trying to do. Um, and so right now we're working on a new album um, with a producer named David Hamilton. Um, David's done, he's worked with a lot of people. He does, he's known for a lot of stuff with Disney in the past. Um, but he's currently producing our, our album right now. And so we have meetings with him pretty regularly via Zoom and keep, keep the conversation going about the album we're working on and come up with ideas and arrangements and all that stuff just over Zoom. Do you follow a schedule <laughs> now that, you know, your days kind of yeah. come together? I thrive off of a schedule. I absolutely love them. Um, when possible, I stick to as, as much of a routine as I can. With a two-year-old, I have to be ready at any moment to throw that completely out the window and change course for the day. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. Um, and my wife and I, um, so when I'm not touring, I'm, I'm obviously at home. And I also, I do some freelance design work, graphic design, web design. And so I work, do that from home. My wife also works from home. Um, and so we, we have to kind of operate around a schedule so that we know who's watching our daughter while the other one's working and when are we going to switch off. And, uh, right, play that. tag team. What is something that you do to stay relaxed at home? Because it can be really tricky when the only place you can be is home. Yes. I have fallen in love with my back porch. <laughs> okay. um, I, which, unfortunately, this is like the rainiest season in Nashville. And so we get a ton of rain right now. But on the days that it's not raining, you will definitely find me on my back porch as much as possible. And it's just being outside, getting fresh air is very uh, replenishing for me and my energy. Um, and I also love to read. I'm a very very big reader. Um, and so pulling away, even if it's for 30 minutes at the end of the day, or a lot of times I'll get up and before my family's awake, I'll just, I'll sit and read for a while just to kind of do something that brings me joy and allows me some rest and just, uh, just to do something that's, that's energizing for me. Some quiet time alone, right? Absolutely. What is a goal that you'd like to accomplish during this time? 
Hmm. Um, I think I, I'd say there's, I have two personal kind of creative goals. Um, one of them is not really just a COVID-19 related goal. It's something that I actually set for myself uh, beginning of the year. My wife and I sat down and instead of doing like a, a New Year's resolution, we've been doing like monthly resolutions. Like what's something you want to do this month? And um, I, I came, I had a goal in January that I didn't do. I didn't do it in February. So every, every month it becomes my new goal for that month. But that's just to do something creative for myself. Uh, with no intent of putting it out for anyone else to ever see, whether it does or doesn't ever make it out there. I just want to do something just for the sake of doing something creative, not to market it, not to publish it, just, just for me and just for my own creative juices. And I haven't actually sat down to do that yet. What? Oh, okay. So when you say creative, though, do you mean something like writing a song? Uh, I know other people who like to do other creative things, like, but they like to draw or they like to bake cakes and mm -hmm. decorate them. Uh, you know, things like that. So those are still creative, but they're not necessarily yeah. musical creative. Yeah, and and for me, it's a pretty broad category. Um, I like doing a lot of non-musical things as well. Um, I actually, ha my my background um, is more in visual arts than it even is in music. Um, I really didn't switch gears to music until college. Um, and so, growing up, I was very, you know, always always drawing and painting and that kind of thing. And okay. um, then I got into graphic design, um, and so. I love to sit down and draw or paint, but most of the time it's something that's been commissioned or something for a client. And so whether I'm, you know, a project where I'm doing something visual or something musical, writing a song, I just want to do something that's just for the sake of doing something creative. <laughs> that's so great. That's awesome. I'm always telling my students to do that. So it's good that they're hearing it from you now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's hard because you, you, you realize there's so many things you could do that might, might make some money or might, you know, have some success. But at the end of the day, you, you can't make your entire uh, craft all around what you're achieving through that. There's, there's definitely value in the creative process itself. If you were to give the artists in training meaning students who are in universities or conservatories, um, advice about the future, what would you tell them? This is a really great time to choose a different career. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, you know, I, <laughs> I, which I had a lot of people tell me that, and I'm glad I did not listen to them. Um, mm. But, uh, I would say, don't forget what inspired you to pursue the arts in the first place and revisit that thing, whatever it is, as often as you can. Mm. Um, as I mentioned earlier, like it's so easy to get caught up in the production of, you know, creating something that's marketable, creating whatever, and to forget why you were in enthralled by your craft to begin with and maybe that was attending a concert you heard of you heard of a vocalist or an instrumentalist that just blew you away and inspired you to pursue it or maybe it was a painting that you saw that just took your breath away maybe it was a broadway show you attended that was just larger than life whatever it was that initially inspired you try to revisit that as often as you can and put yourself in that mindset to remember why it inspired you. And, and in that, I, I tend to find a lot of encouragement to continue creating from that place rather than the place of, of whatever my current circumstances are. Don't let the market uh, dictate your creativity. Um, if anything, let your creativity dictate the market. And I've already seen that in a lot of, a lot of ways, how artists have been 
changing what they're doing and being even more creative to figure out how to do something outside of the lane that they've been running in. And from that, new opportunities are opening up, new markets are developing that didn't exist prior to this uh, because all of a sudden there's new content that needs to be uh, distributed in some, some way. And so don't let the market dictate the creativity. I mean, yeah, we can't go to concerts. We can't go on tour. We can't put an orchestra in a room together to record. Uh, a lot of people don't even have the money to buy the work that we want to create. Um, don't let that stop you from still creating. Do what you love. Uh, be smart about it. We still have to make a living. We still have to be smart, but um, right. but do what you love. And people are quick to realize when you're doing something that's inauthentic to who you are. Um, so stay authentic to who you are, what you believe, where you're coming from, and the the type of art that actually moves you. And when you're creating something that moves you, it's going to move uh, those that that art was originally intended for. And I think it has the way of finding its own audience. Uh, sometimes it's easy to try to create something with a specific audience in mind, but if you create what moves you, I think then it's going to, it's going to find its way into the, the hands of the people that are going to be moved by it. What is a song that comes to mind when you would like to encourage someone? That's a hard question for me. Okay. For a lot of reasons. And I think I'm going to avoid answering it in a really roundabout way. <laughs> At least try to, right? <laughs> yes. So I I don't know if you're familiar with the Enneagram at all, but I'm an Enneagram yeah. five. I'm an Enneagram five with a four wing. And this is probably a very five wing four answer. But I I don't ever personally approach music with the purpose of it just encouraging me necessarily. Um, I know a lot of people do, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's just, that's just me saying the way I, I tend to. I approach music usually for a, some sort of cathartic experience. Okay. Um, I, I approach the arts in general for, for some sort of catharsis. Um, it's allowing me to experience something emotional intellectual, spiritual, that I otherwise would not have experienced. And the things that move me, the things that allow me to experience that kind of thing, doesn't always move everyone else the same way. And so I, I, tend, to, I tend to lean into a lot of more dramatic stuff, more uh, moody things, if you will, or... Um, things that allow me to sit in my thoughts and sit in my emotions rather than just bring me out of those thoughts or emotions. And so I, I tend to find stuff that's kind of a soundscape for wherever I am that day. And usually that allows me to kind of process what I'm doing. And so that's different. I mean, if I'm, if I'm just kind of in a chill mood and just kind of pensive, I might put on something really just eclectic and like a, a Bon Iver or something like that. That's just some soundscapes that allows me to just sit in my thoughts. I'm not really focused on the words of that kind of thing. I'm just more of the feeling of it. If I, if I, sometimes I'm, I'm sitting in uh, some sadness based on wh whatever the circumstances and I'm, I'm remembering uh, a time from, from long ago where things were different, things were better, things were happier. I might listen to whatever was the soundtrack of my life, which might not even be a happy song in and of itself, but it might make me happy remembering those days and reliving those days. Um, so I, I know that's totally avoiding actually answering the question, but that's the most authentic answer I can give is I don't know. I think I'd want to know who I'm talking to and where they're coming from to know what what I would recommend for them to listen to. <laughs> so how about this? Based on how you're feeling, um, according to what's happening in your life at this point, Yes. what would you recommend as a song? I, I would actually, I just mentioned him. Um, I, I've been listening to a lot of Bon Iver, that kind of thing. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, Cause sometimes that, people just need to like chill, just relax. That's, and that's exactly what it does for me. Um, it's not super heady music. Um, and that like, I don't have to really dig in to listen intently to figure out what's going on or to get something out of it. It's, it's very soundscape and it kind of sets my emotions and my mood where it needs to be for the day. So, uh, so yeah, I, I definitely recommend Bon Iver for these, this time, if you want something to just kind of set the sound soundtrack for your day. Are you currently training with anyone right now? Like still working? Not right now. With anybody? Um, I'm, I'm not currently training. Um, I, I did just, um, I I just finished a master's degree this past year. Um, and, and I was obviously training throughout that whole time. And so now I'm just, I'm working on my own. Um, still trying to stay in shape, especially now when we're, when we're not touring, it's that much more important to stay in shape because I'll go a few days without singing and it, you feel it. So what do you do to stay in shape vocally? Um, a lot of it is just, it's, for me, part of it is just the consistency of actually singing every day. Um, it doesn't have to be a long drawn out, um, specific warm up routine or vocalese. And I do those things at times when I, when I need it, but making sure that I sing something every day. And sometimes that's singing a couple songs to my daughter before she goes to bed or Sometimes it's just goofing off with my family and just singing, you know, along with the Trolls soundtrack, um, which we're listening to a lot these days. Um, and then sometimes it is actually, you know, maybe I, I told my wife, I need to just get in the car and drive for 30 minutes and sing through some of my classical rep that I haven't been doing lately. Uh, we live in a townhome, so I try to be cautious not to do too many classical things that are going to be big loud and obnoxious for my neighbors <laughs> but um but yeah singing something 10 15 20 minutes a day just kind of helps keep your keeps your voice in shape and also just emotionally it does so much for you right and i heard another person say that uh singing is is a different type of athleticism mm -hmm. right because we absolutely you don't just perform on the stage. You have to keep up the work leading up to the actual performance. Absolutely. All of the workouts that lead you there, all of the keeping the range, the agility in the voice, being able to still do some of the riffs that yeah. you sing in the songs. Yeah. It's all in the background when you're practicing, <laughs> uh, in the practice room, not when you're on the stage Absolutely. in front of everyone and and you know a good artist makes it look easy so when other people are watching it they're like oh wow that looks so easy mm. <laughs> maybe i should try it but then they realize that it really isn't easy for sure. you had to work hard to get where you are and do what you do for sure so all of that practice and keeping it up like you said um when you're singing through songs every day do you try to sing something that is at the top of your range and all the way down to the bottom of your range or do you just kind of stay within like your happy tessitura yeah if if i'm just trying to you know just make sure that i'm not getting lazy a lot of times it's just singing something that sits in my tessitura and uh just to keep things in motion um, but if I purposely am going, okay, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to run some exercises. I'm going to focus on something that's a little more challenging Then yeah, I do try to extend my range and, and do stuff that, you know, I probably am not going to just walk around the house singing, but I have to get in the mindset and actually buckle up and do it. What is your lowest note in your range? Cause you are the um, big in Veritas. I am. Yeah. And I'm, I am technically a bass baritone. Um, I don't have some of the extreme low notes like some basses do, um, but I also don't have the upper range of, of a baritone. Um, so I kind of sit between E2 and E4. Um, that's my, that's my okay. general, I can do that every day. Um, I don't, classically, I've never performed anything below an E, uh, an E2. 
Um, I've never performed above an F cla classically. In pop stuff, I think I've done a I've done a few F sharps or in like in the production of Savior. Um, I, I've pre performed that a few times, um, and that's got some F sharps. Uh, but that's about as high as I ever sing. Um, if I'm on a microphone doing some like acapella jazz or something like that, I on a good day I might go down to like a B flat. Um, or something like that, okay. or I might record a B flat, but I don't, I don't just <laughs> wake up and have that every day. That's if I got it, then I'll sing it. <laughs> got it. Okay.